Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. My name is Laura and you can find me on the rest of the internet as iHeartU, spelled E-W-E. That is my Instagram handle, that is the name of my Etsy shop, and you can find me on Ravelry as iHeartU Knits. Uh, so welcome, if this is your first time here, thanks for joining me. This is my uh, knitting vlog channel. And today I have quite a lot of knitting to go through with you, which probably more knitting content this episode than I've had for you in like any episode this year. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I think that now that the weather is cooling off, I'm getting excited about knitting again. Yeah, I just want to jump right into it. Before we start, I just wanted to let you know that I have some bags on display here from my Etsy shop. And there are lots of holiday, um, winter, Christmas themed bags in the shop as well as others right now. And I did ex decide to extend my Black Friday Cyber Weekend sale a little longer. The majority of the shop is still 20% off, so don't feel like you missed out. There's still lots in the shop if you are interested. So you can find the link for that as well as links to anywhere else I am on the internet. Down below there is a link tree um, that will take you anywhere that you need to go. What am I wearing today? This is the Throw Over Sweater by Andrea Mowry. It is a beautiful yoked sweater. I knit this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in their heathered colorways and then I just chose to repeat this um, stripe motif on the cuffs and on the uh, waistband as well like around the bottom of the waist and I really like this sweater it gets a good amount of wear and I generally get compliments when I wear it from people um, you know non-knitting people just compliment it because it's a nice sweater <laughs> so, <laughs> so if that matters to you <laughs> um, that might be another reason to knit this sweater um, okay, I'm fighting the light right now. Uh, the sun is about to pop around soon and blind me here. So I just want to get right into the knitting. Um, the first thing I have to show you is something that I finished probably just a few days after I filmed my last episode. These are my Halloween knit along socks for the Halloween knit along that I did on Instagram. Uh, thank you for joining if you knit along with me. It was so great to see everyone's projects and I got a really nice message from the winner who won, um, you know, project bag and some other goodies. They were, they seem to be really excited, so that's great too. Uh, so these are Knit Picks Felici, which is their self-striping merino sock yarn. Um, if you're interested in shopping Knit Picks, I have an affiliate link down below if you click on that. Um, it'll take you right to Knit Picks and you can shop. And I just did my standard Fish Lips Kiss Heel and my like rounded toe and they turned out great. I think I finished them on like November 1st. Uh, it's December 1st today when I'm recording this. So yeah, they've been done for a little while but I wanted to um, show them to you. So I had them kind of put aside. They were in my Halloween spiderweb bag. And I have a decent amount of this yarn left. I still have about this much of my second ball. So that could go with something else and maybe make um, a hat or something like that. I have held self-striping double with like a more solid yarn like this and then um, turn my leftovers into something else, which is kind of fun. Uh, the other thing that I just finished last night, I believe, are these socks, which I think you saw them. I just started them last time, so I'm just gonna pop them on the blockers for you quickly. So these are just another pair of vanilla socks in kind of my standard recipe. And they turned out great as well. So this is an older yarn by someone who doesn't dye anymore. This is by the Fawn Knits, the Fawn and the Fox Yarns. And this was the Down the Rabbit Hole colorway, which was an Alice in Wonderland inspired colorway. So um, you can see there's lots of colors kind of associated with each of the characters in there. And I just had this bright blue um, solid that I paired with it because it just looked like it was going to be a great match and I'm really happy with how these turned out. 
Um, again, just my standard vanilla recipe. So I usually do about, say about 25 rounds of two by two ribbing, and then I do maybe 40 rounds of stockinette, maybe a little more, a little less, depending on what I feel like doing. And then the fish lips kiss heel. And then for me, I have a size like seven and a half to eight shoe. I knit, um, until I have seven and a half inches from the very back of the heel before I start my toe. I'm just a standard toe. So yeah, another, um, pair of socks for the box. Um, I've been putting my new socks away and not pulling them out to wear yet because I'm trying to wear out some of my older socks first. Uh, this is just living in another one of my project bags. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited that those are finished because I kind of want to do some new projects soon. I have another project which is a sock project that I started but I can't show you because it is a gift so I did start those and then I'm just digging through my pile of whips here to see what else has progress that needs to be shown uh, I think out of like my sock yarn kind of whips that's pretty much it um, I didn't really do any work on those deconstructed fade socks that I showed you last time but I would like to get started on the second one of those. I'm going to try and knit those concurrently. Uh, the other thing that I got a good amount of work done on is this shawl. Um, so it's kind of hard to show because it's at an awkward phase and it's really twisty. This is going to really open up a lot with blocking, I think. But this is the Breathe and Hope shawl. It is by um, Casapinka and I started this quite a while ago and I knit, I think I knit the first few sections. So I think when I pulled it back out um, last week or so, I was just finished this striping section. And then since then I've done like all of this. So there's the striping section and I've done all of this and another striping section. And I think I'm about to start this stripe section. I again. Um, but it's turning out great. It's been um, actually really fun to work on. I feel like it's like the perfect mix of it's kind of mindless, but you sort of have to pay attention. So the, you know, everything's really easy to remember the repeats. And once you kind of set up a section, it's really easy to track how you're going and things like that. Um, but yeah, as the rounds are getting, or as the rows are getting longer, it's just becoming a really nice, meditative, enjoyable knit. Um, I would recommend doing what the pattern says and going up a needle size for this color work section. Um, this is like a slipped stitch section and it's really hard to, um, it would be really hard to get this to the proper gauge without going up a needle size. You can see even on my first section here I went up a needle size but I was still kind of pulling it a little tight um, so it's a little puckery that will block out for sure um, but I was definitely more successful at spacing it out and getting um, less of a tight knit on this second section. So definitely um, do what the pattern says. Don't, um, if you're not a loose knitter, I would not uh, try and risk it with using the main needles all the way through. I would definitely get your other set of needles out and switch out to do this section. Um, the yarn that I'm using is two different dyers, two different yarns. So I have Euphoria Knits in their Frenzy base. This is just in a really nice heathered, um, or, you know, tonal charcoal. And I'm combining that with this pink yarn, which is from Spun Right Round, I believe. Yes, it is. And it's called Kiss and Tell. And uh, yeah, they're making a really beautiful combo. They're making a really nice um, pattern. And there's just enough contrast between the two that um, you know it's really showing the patterns here and like I said once this is blocked and opened up I think it's going to look really great it you know as you're knitting it it doesn't look awesome because it really just wants to kind of come back together 
um, but once once I block it I think it's gonna look really good so that has gotten some play but I've just stolen the needles the big needles that I need for the next section to work on something else so we'll see how long that lasts this is in one of my medium size uh, drawstring bags which is actually a great two skein shawl bag um, and then I think that is it for works in progress yeah I have some other things in the basket here but I've not worked on them so there's no need to show you that um, but here on the floor I have another finished object which is my cozy classic raglan I am so excited that this is finished um, it's actually still a little damp. I kind of wanted to wear it today, but I can I can still feel it's definitely damp. Um, but you, as you can see, it just turned out great. It is just a wonderful pattern. Um, I've talked about how great the pattern is a lot, but I talked about it like back in February when I started this. So if you missed that episode 10 months ago, um, the raglan seams on this are just so beautifully thought out. Um, this is a Jessie May Designs pattern. Jessie May does beautiful, beautiful patterns and they're very well thought out. So, um, you know, this may just look like a standard sweater pattern, but it is, it's not. <laughs> it's a beautiful sweater pattern. It's very well executed and it's very well thought out and the finished garment is just lovely like the fit on it is lovely it's graded beautifully um, I knit I think it's the fourth size I knit the 46 inch um, bust circumference and I think I knit everything else to pattern um, it's a little bit cropped um, but it has just kind of a bit more um, a bit more space and a bit more give up in the top area than some of my other patterns so the the tighter cropped kind of feel really works for it if that makes sense and I know the last time I showed it to you I'd finished one sleeve and I was really concerned about the tightness of the sleeves and I actually did go back and look at the pattern and it does say that straight up it says that the sleeves taper pretty heavily and are quite tight on the forearm and if you don't want to do that then they recommend um, they have a couple of different options for ways to alter the fit on the sleeve for you so um, you know originally I had talked and chatted back and forth with a few of you about like knitting a second sleeve in a different size or um, with a different going up a needle size something like that and then this just got shoved in the corner because I just didn't want to deal with it didn't want to work on it didn't want to rip out the sleeve and that's so silly because now it's just sad and sad and sad but either way I, I pulled it out I tried it on again instead of just putting the sleeve on my arm I actually put the whole sweater on and the only thing that was really tight was kind of the cuff area and I didn't do a very good job on my tubular bind off here my sewn bind off so what I decided to do is instead of ripping the whole sleeve out, I just ripped the sleeve back to where the ribbing started. And instead of using the smaller needles for the ribbing, I just continued and did the ribbing in the same size needles that I used for the entire sweater. And then I did just a really simple, um, like, like a classic bind off. I didn't do, do the sewn bind off or the tubular bind off or anything like that. I just did the classic bind off and made sure that I um, left like lots of space in between so that um, it had some stretch to it and it wasn't too tight. And this turned out to be a really great fix for me because now the sweater is done. I didn't need to re-knit the, the first sleeve. I just cast on um, the second sleeve and then I was done. And all I had to do was rip back and re-knit the cuff, which took like a couple hours. So, you know, I was laughing about that this week that, you know, I started this sweater so long ago and then, you know, one little bump in the road and it ended up just getting shoved in the corner and now it's finished and I just, I love it so much. I think it's going to get so much wear. So, um... I don't know what the lesson is there. It's winter now and this is when I want it. So <laughs> I guess if I had finished it midsummer, it would kind of just be, I'd be in the same situation right now, but 
um, yeah, <laughs> it's finished now. You know, it doesn't matter how long it took to get there. We got there in the end and I have a beautiful sweater. Uh, the yarn that I used for this is Knit Picks Swish DK. So that is their Superwash Merino yarn. Um, in the DK, I don't think I've ever knit a garment out of the Swish DK. I might have knit a hat or something out of one of the Swish lines, um, but it is beautiful yarn. Um, it's very, very soft. And I don't see any major pilling happening yet, although I haven't worn it. Um, but sometimes, you know, yarns will even pill up as you're knitting them. And I haven't really seen that, especially considering how long it was shoved in that project bag for. Um, and the drape on it. The drape is just beautiful on this. Um, the weight of it, it's not that heavy of a weight. I think the whole sweater weighs under 400 grams. Um, but it's very warm and cozy. So I really have nothing, nothing negative to say here. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to hold this up so you can see it. And then also keep my mouth clear so you can read my lips, but it's just not working. So, um, <laughs> it's great. It's great. If you are on the fence about this pattern, if you're thinking about it, and you're not sure if you want to make it or not, I would say go for it. Get some really beautiful DK yarn. Um, I've also seen people do like um, fingering weight and mohair. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong. It's a really beautiful pattern and I think it's just a staple garment for your wardrobe. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Okay, you can see this is what I'm fighting is the light. It's just about to come around. So that's very exciting that that's finished. <laughs> uh, I am really excited to start something new now because I try and only keep one sweater on the go at a time. So I'm really excited this, this is done. So I have some stuff to show you, but I don't have a new project yet. I just have a project in the works. Um, but I just wanted to show you this before I go. Um because I'm really excited about it. So the next pattern that I am going to knit is the Halibut sweater, which is a pattern by um, Boylan Knitworks. Caitlin Hunter from Caitlin Hunter. <laughs> I couldn't think of her name. Uh, she put this out almost exactly a year ago. I looked it up and I actually, when I went to print this pattern, I had purchased it almost a year ago in November, 2021. Um, it is a top-down yoke sweater with halibut fish all over the yoke. I'm really excited about this one. Um, you know, halibut swim in our waters here, so it kind of has like a localish feel. I think Caitlin Hunter is up in Alaska, which kind of makes sense because, um, because you know, we're kind of all on the same coast here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's some kind of vibes that go through even though you know I'm much further south than Alaska and in a different country you know we have kind of a feel so this kind of looks like a gimmick sweater but to me it's not to me it's going to be like something I'll have forever <laughs> so really excited about it it says the halibut sweater is a unisex size inclusive yoked colorwork sweater knit seamlessly from the top down it has options for a turtleneck mock turtleneck or a crew neck neckline and then you can adjust everything else so my plan is to do like a crew neck kind of style something like this um, I might do a um, doubled over collar you know where you knit twice as much and then fold it down and tack it down to the inside so it kind of stands up a little more. I think that might be my plan. And I think she used Calburn Woolen Scout in the example. Yeah, she did. Um, but what I opted to do is to use the Holst Garn, which I've never used before. This is how this is how the smaller skeins are put up. So this is a little 50 gram, 287 meters, 314 yard, um, and this is like a fingering weight. So I got two of those for the contrast color. And then I got, um, I don't have it with me, it's close by, but I got um, a cone 
So you can get the whole scarn on a 500 gram cone as well. And that was enough. One cone was enough, was enough for me to do um, like all the yardage that I needed in my sweater. Um, so that's kind of cool. And I'm holding this double. That's the important thing here. I knew there was something that I wanted to tell you that was important. Um, and it's that I'm holding this double to get the gauge of the Kelburn Woolen Scout. So I think I did show you this yarn when I purchased it, which I think was um, with some Christmas money I got last year. Um, but I have finally gotten my act together and started to plan out this pattern. Um, I made a teeny tiny swatch. <laughs> This is about as good as I get for swatches. It's four inches across <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's maybe 10 or 20 rows here. <laughs> Not very much, but it was enough to let me know that this yarn was going to give me gauge with the needles. Um, so that's really all I needed. And then I gave it a little wash and dry as well, which I don't normally do, but I really wanted to see how the yarn was going to react to washing. And... Um, as people had said in other podcasts and things, the whole scarn really um, blooms. It feels a little rough in the skein um, and almost like, like it's hard, I think you can see here, it's almost like the plies are barely even twisted together. Um, so when you're working with it at first, it's kind of like not the greatest, but it really bloomed beautifully and I think it's got that woolen spun kind of thing that um, say like Brooklyn Tweed or something like that would have where um, it's just going to get better with washing. Um, yeah, it like I can't, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It almost has that linen feel where it's a little rough um, in the skein but as you're knitting it, it doesn't feel too rough on my hands yet and um, yeah, it's really bloomed beautifully. Um, you know, maybe once I've started the sweater, I can show this, <laughs> my tiny swatch, like side by side with, you know, the knitted unblocked garment. So you can see because, um, the yarn's really blooming and really filling in all this, all the empty spaces in between the stitches and it's becoming a beautiful thing. Uh, it's fun to get gauge on a substitution perfectly, like um, the gauge is 20 stitches for four inches and that's exactly what I got with the needles that are called for. Um, I think what I ended up doing was the holst garn I realized was almost exactly half the yardage of the Kelburn Scout. So like 50 grams of the whole scarn had almost the same amount of yardage that 100 grams of the Kelburn Wellens Scout had. So I was guessing in a kind of yardage to weight situation and since they're kind of similar yarns that I was going to get a good substitution with that. But I didn't know for sure until I started. So I'm really happy that that's going to work out. I will do um, one needle size larger for the color work. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I didn't do that on this one, um, but I have done that on every color work sweater since I knit this one, and uh, I think it makes a difference. Um, just opens it up a little more, and I don't have to stress quite so much about keeping an even tension through the color work. So, yeah, I think I think that's it. I'm just I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be a great sweater. <laughs> it's um like it's a little wacky because it has fish all over the yoke but I'm totally in for it I'm down for it and I think that this is going to make a good um main color contrast color situation and that was the other thing I wanted to tell you is because I'm holding it double I had to wind off some cakes from that big um from that big cone because there's no way to get to the inside of the cone it's you know 500 grams of yarn wrapped around um, like a cardboard core so I just pulled out my ball winder and used my hand to put a little bit of tension on the um, yarn as it, was, as it was feeding through and then just wound off some cakes and I'll just continue to wind off cakes as I need them I have these two and then this one, which is a little wonky because I didn't have any tension on my ball winder when I did this one. 
Um, so it's just really loose and wonky. I packed all that up into an XL project bag. This is one that I actually made for the shop. Um, it's hard to see on camera, but there was a little bit of fading in my fabric. Um, this is an older fabric and the light blue really shows the fading. Yeah, it's not that obvious, but I could see it and I didn't want to sell it. And I didn't actually have one of these XL bucket bags of my own. You know, I've made a lot of them. Uh, so I just decided to keep this one. So it's going to be all loaded up um, and I'm really excited. <laughs> How many times have I told you that? <laughs> Probably too many. So yes, so that is a pretty good kind of quick and dirty update on my current projects and my finished projects. I am going to switch into doing a little bit of gift knitting for the next few weeks and um, I'm going to maybe do a little bit of work on this pullover just to keep me entertained if I get bored with um, trying to crank away at gift projects as fast as I can before uh, the holidays. So um, that's my plan for the next little while is mostly um, doing a little bit of gift knitting and then I will come back to kind of my own knitting um, probably in a couple weeks before Christmas. So um, I have plans for some other projects, but I think I will wait and show those to you next time. And hopefully I will be back in less than 40 days. I think it's been 40 days since my last episode. <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to continue to apologize for being flaky, but I am really sorry for being flaky. <laughs> Uh, as you all know, when life gets busy, the things that we are, you know, 100% in control of are usually the first things to go. So, you know, for me, I've started another job. Um, I'm working at like our local um, private wine and beer store, and I was doing a lot of shifts while someone was away. And um, yeah, that's just the way it goes when I have priorities and when I have um, obligations to other people then the first thing I will put aside are things that I have 100% control over, which is unfortunately things like my podcast and the Etsy shop. But that's the way life goes. You know, we just have to find a balance. And um, I really appreciate y'all coming back if, you know, you're returning viewers. That's really great. Um, thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> your comments mean a lot and your encouragement makes me um, more willing to come back. Um, you know, when I don't post very often, my views go down and then nobody sees my podcast. And then I don't really want to continue putting episodes up because I feel like nobody's watching it. So it's like this horrible, vicious cycle, but your wonderful comments and your encouragement always, um, you know, make me feel better about coming back. And, uh, updating you on what's going on. So thank you for that. I really appreciate you. And um, if you want to subscribe or, you know, hit the thumbs up button or hit the notification bell, that would be awesome. Uh, the other thing that you could do that would be wonderful is um, just suggest my podcast to people who may not have heard about it. Uh, that would be a great way to get the word out there to um, more wonderful, fabulous knitters that, uh, that are just the best people. So <laughs> I would love to continue to grow this little community around my making. And I really appreciate you for enjoying this, taking an interest and all of your advice and help and everything. So yeah, I think I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you're having a wonderful fall and winter or spring and summer, depending on where you are. And I will be back to talk to you again soon.